so we're in Toronto at Crow's Nest Barbershop with John. He's been barbering for that camera. That camera. <laughs> for 11 <laughs> years. And we're going to ask him a few questions about him and his shop. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about your history as a barber and how you ended up doing it. Uh, it's a long and convoluted tale, but um, essentially just like being in barbershops and love the whole experience. This would be somewhere in the late 90s, I think, I, eh, maybe early 2000s, like 2000-ish, I think. I, cut, I had like long hair, pro snowboarder, fucking that guy. <laughs> cut my hair off, but I'd always been into like punk rock music and like old cars and stuff like that. So then I, anyways, whatever, haircuts, like the barbershop experience. Couldn't quite get it right at any of the places I went to. And then a friend of mine said, hey, you gotta go see Dustin Fishbook at, uh, at Uptown Barbershop. And I lived in Vancouver at the time. So I went in there and like, dude was, I think 24. I think I was probably 22 at the time. I don't even remember. Uh, and he nailed my haircut perfect first try. And I was like, I'm gonna do this. Literally, I was like, it changed like with one haircut. I was like, I'm gonna be a barber one day. And I worked in the skateboard and snowboard industry and I was like doing marketing and stuff at that time. And um, so I wasn't like, I couldn't figure out how to transition yeah. from that to, to barbering. But uh, so it took me like five years to kind of figure out how to transition and, and find someone to apprentice me and all that kind of stuff. But um, cause I actually left Vancouver very soon after that. Like I hung around for about eight months and then moved to Montreal for a woman who's now my wife. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that, and then here we are. And then I worked, uh, I did an apprenticeship at Blood and Bandages, which is a shop here. Um, Roger got me my start, finally took me in. I kind of just bugged him to the point where he didn't have a choice. Uh, I kept going in and going in and going in and going in. He's like, dude, I can't apprentice you, but if you bring your friends in here, I'll like critique your haircuts. And then I just started doing it so much that he's like, all right, I mean, I'll apprentice you. So he, he gave me my start and I worked there, I apprenticed there and worked there for a bit and then did this. So Baldwin has exploded over the past, you know, five, six, seven years through social media, Instagram. What would you say are the good things and the bad things, especially in Canada, about the boom? I mean, what I'll say like, as a double-edged sword, it's like, with the popularity of it, it's like at least people are appreciating barbering as a service again. Like when I, you know, when I first started being interested in doing it, people kind of like literally laughed at me and they're like, you want to be a barber? Really? Why? You know? And uh, so it's great that people are like out there experiencing it again and, and, and subscribing to barbershops as like as a service and a way of life and whatever. Um, you know, but then obviously with anything that becomes very popular, there's there's gonna be a downside, you know? But again, like, I, I, I'm, I spent a few years really getting worked up about all the negative stuff going on out there, and like, why? Like, look at how lucky we are, dude. We get to cut hair and travel everywhere and hang out with our friends and have tattoos and do whatever we want, really, right? So it's like, you can't take that too seriously, or without, like, gratitude, so. So to sit and dwell on you know, I wish there was a bit more camaraderie, you know, amongst like amongst us as an industry in Canada. I think that there's a little bit more, there's a little bit too much that people are too scared of like, I don't know what it is, but there's a little too much it's like, like yeah, and it's fine to like have healthy competition, but I think it's like, I don't think it's healthy. So like I was just in California last week and like six shops, we all went out bowling one night and like it was sick. Like, that's how and, tough barbers are, they go bowling. That's right, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And you know, like, and I've tried to, you know, James and I from Reserva, like we've tried to throw a couple things to like, bring all the boys to the yard, you know? And it's like, some people have actually wanted to come from other shops and their bosses said they couldn't go or they'd be fired. Like, I don't know, I don't, wow. It's good for the audio. Anyway. You can show, you can show the audience. The, yeah, the propane tank that's coming down off the ledge. And well, you were telling me before, actually, that you know there's no actual legislation of barber school. Uh, people take apprentices, mm -hmm. like apprenticeships, and or they go and do like a salon course. Mm -hmm. um, what do you hope for the future in terms of education for barbershops here? I mean, I think it would be. It's tough because like 
I, I like that if you want to be a barber, you should do it the traditional way and do an apprenticeship and learn from some from a master and and go through the two years of like getting coffee and answering phones and sweeping the floor. Like to me, that's like because like I, I worked at tattoo shops before and like that's kind of their approach to an apprenticeship and I and I like that. Like I like I like that you have to put your time in and and we're very very serious about it here in terms of like how we do our apprenticeships. Like. A lot of a lot of the people in the city will do like a four month like picked up never picked up clippers four months later you're a master barber and that's like it's just not how it works for me so so I, I don't want to ever see the apprenticeship side of it go away would I like to there to be more focus and you know like a barbering license yeah sure I mean like or at least a qualification of sorts. yeah like I think that like I, I'd like to just see a bit of quality control so yeah. however that looks you know what I mean like and I, I'd like to see people have to like put their time in and whether that's like legislatively or just like I don't know whatever like, hours at least. yeah like just learn how to do it properly like don't like don't race to get through this just like learn it learn it well and you'll have a very long career you yeah. know if you just like if you just hump through it like it's not fun no <laughs>